A few years ago now, back in the Jurassic period, I embarked upon a mighty great adventure to teach myself how to code and join the realm of programming. And since then I have learned a lot and reflecting upon this experience, there are many things that I would do differently if I had the insight that I have in the current age. So I figured there'd be a bunch of people out there that might be interested in knowing the things I wish I knew before I got into programming. And there's a bunch of them, things to avoid, what you should do, how to learn most effectively. And I'm going to share four of the main takeaways that I feel are super important to know as you embark upon your journey into code. Starting off with number one, it's probably not what you expect, GitHub. When I was learning how to code, it was a milestone if I could just know a programming language or write some lines of code effectively let alone understanding the programming ecosystem, what GitHub is, what Git is, and all of the online tools and technology that, you know, I use on a regular basis in addition to writing code. Now you might be wondering, James, why do I need to know about a code versioning tool early on in my learn to code journey? And there's a really good reason, and it's actually not one that GitHub markets itself actively for. It's because when used appropriately, GitHub can be the most powerful learning tool that you have in your disposal. Essentially, if used effectively, you can index everything that you know inside of this god tier knowledge bank. And it works as an extension of that wee little noggin. We have small little smooth brains. So if you can utilize GitHub and save all of your code there, index code examples, and start doing that from inception you're just going to exponentiate this learning resource that you always have at your disposal i wish i did it earlier it's pretty easy to get up and running with but it's absolutely something that you should have on your radar and you should build it into your code learn to code journey from day one i have a video on my channel as to how you should do that breaking down the process explicitly that will be linked in the description down below if that's interesting to you check that out number two is what I call learn versus do. You know, I teach people how to code on YouTube and I get a lot of messages from people who are like, okay, I've been learning the same thing for about six months now, when should I start doing? And I'm like, say who, what now? If you want to learn to code in the most, effect, most efficacious manner, in my opinion, you want to learn the bare minimum you need to know to start getting your hands dirty. And, you know, that means going from the learning, the intake of information into the application phase as rapidly as possible. And, you know, the question crops up, how do I know when I'm ready to start applying my knowledge? And my answer would be, there's only one way to find out. And I just think that, you know, programming is application, doing, writing code, running applications, building programs to do a particular, you know, serve a purpose or a, a certain utility. And the sooner you start doing and stop learning, well, you never stop learning, doing is a part of the learning, but instead of just intaking the information, start putting it into practice in new contexts, solve your own problems, doing all of that stuff. And the sooner you do that, the better programmer you will be and all the faster because of it. Absolutely something I'd highly recommend. And just remember that the downside of doing it this way is that you will find you get stuck, but that's just part of life half of being a programmer is being stuck and finding a way to circumnavigate or overcome any hurdles or obstacles you may encounter you know if you get stuck go back and learn a bit more try again you'll probably get past it if you continue to get stuck go back learn a bit more and you'll be sweet don't spend a million years just learning and not applying because you haven't really completed your learning until you do the application. So that's point number two. So one is get onto GitHub, start building up that knowledge bank of all of these resources nicely indexed inside of your GitHub page. Two is start doing, don't just learn, do as soon as possible. Number three is going to be broken down into three parts because it's kind of big. One, th you know, we're on the internet. There's 101 million ways that you can learn to code. Everyone has a different opinion. I have my own opinions. I created a resource specifically because I have my own opinions to teach people how to code on how I wish I did it. 
The point is that one of the problems, you get paralysis of choice. When you have too many things to choose from, too many people saying you need to do all of these things to consider yourself a programmer, are you going to be able to do all of them? No, you're literally just writing yourself a step-by-step -step instruction for failure. So the first thing you need to do to avoid this, because, you know, once again, when you, there's a thing called the Dunning-Kruger effect, and essentially you come into a new, well, moral of the story, you start off with no knowledge, and you realize that there's so much knowledge that you have to learn eventually, and it's just so overwhelming, and everyone tells you how much you have to learn. So we're going to avoid that from the beginning. And the first step to doing that is know your destination. Now that's hard, but there's a lot of ways that you can know your destination from informational interviews with people in a job that you think you want to talking to chat GPT, to looking up what it's like doing this particular role. So important that you know whether or not you want to be a data scientist or a full stack developer, you know, and that doesn't mean you're fixed into that decision. But it's important to have that decision because that allows you to do the second part of this third step, which is pick a path. Don't spread yourself too thin. Don't try to do everything simultaneously because it's impossible. You want to cut, cut all the fat, have a lean experience, get yourself to that destination as quickly as possible and pivot if you find you want to change your mind or if a particular roadmap or resource isn't working for you. For example, I have a learn to code roadmap. Anyone can go through it for free. It's linked in the description down below. And it takes you from knowing absolutely zip, zilch, totally nothing from the beginning, from scratch, inception to absolute hero, full stack developer that is linked in the description down below. That's a path. And the point is, is that, you know, you can avoid all of that background information, all of these distractions and actually achieve your goal in a reasonable time span while you still have the passion and life to pursue that. Now, that pretty much covers the third part, which is don't spread yourself too thin, pick a path, stick to it like there's no tomorrow, and pivot if necessary. Now, the last point, saving the best for last, this is, this is huge. People always muck this up, and, you know, they're just making their life infinitely harder, and it's that you need to do less more often. Do less more often. I, you know, people be like, well, I can tell that some people who follow my resources, they'll do eight hours every weekend over the course of a month. So they're doing what, 24 to 32 hours in a month, which is a lot. That's a lot when you're learning to code. However, every, you know, they'll do eight hours of work on a weekend. By the next weekend, it's all fallen away. It's, you know, dust in the wind in terms of that knowledge. And it's just not an effective way to learn. You're so much better to do 30 minutes every day. I like a 30 minute window. It's person dependent. 30 minutes every day is infinitely going to be the more effective way to learn to code. Do it regularly. Slow little bites, but regularly done 1% every day. And you will once again, exponentiate your growth, your knowledge, your capabilities off to the moon in absolutely no time. It makes such a big difference whether or not you do it you know, repeatedly day to day versus infrequently. If you are an infrequent learn to coder, you are just making your life that much harder. Don't do it that way. That's my, I mean, obviously if you have to do it that way, you have to do it that way and full power to you. But if you can do less more often, I'd highly recommend it. It's just going to be a more effective way to learn. It's going to save you a lot of time, a lot of energy, and you will reach your destination, your goals and objectives that much faster. Anyway, those are the four things I wish I knew when I got into coding earlier so that I didn't have to waste a whole lot of time, effort, energy, and life on things that just weren't contributing to my overall objective. If you have any recommendations based on your own experience, share them. Let me know in the comments down below. I'd absolutely love to hear. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, don't forget to smash the like and subscribe buttons, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace. Learning to code? If so, be sure to check out the Learn to Code roadmap or dive straight in with these videos. That's a good one.